Hello everyone, welcome back to Fahrenheit. Remember at the end of last episode when I said this game just goes downhill from here? Well guess what? It did! It went downhill because when I came back into the game to come to this exact scene here, where I left off, the game had not saved my progress properly and the, po the point where I continued from was back at Agatha's house, like a half hour to an hour back. Yeah! Thankfully though, I think I mentioned at the beginning that uh, I got this game from GOG.com and they give you a... Uh, they basically give you a save file that has all of the bonus content unlocked. And I thought, wait a minute, if that save file they give you has all the bonus content unlocked, then they probably have the entire game completed, right? So I put that save file in, and indeed they do. So now I have everything in the game unlocked, and I can start from any point that I want. So thankfully that saved my ass, and now I can start from here, where I actually left off. Stupid game. You know, game, it's really not cool to just erase, like, an hour of progress. Not cool. Okay, anyway. Let's go break into Tiffany's place. My ex-girlfriend that doesn't really like him anymore. Yeah, let's go do that. It's another homeless person. I think. It seems like they're always watching me. Another homeless person. I get the feeling they're everywhere, and they're watching me. <laughs> I must be getting paranoid. Yeah, you're just paranoid. The police. They're watching Tiffany's apartment, of course. They assumed that I'd show up here looking for a place to hide. I have to find another way in. Alright, gotta go in through the back. Which I think is over here. Yes. Okay, what if I fail this? I'm gonna fail this QTE. I wanna see what happens. <laughs> you do just fall off. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do it for real this time. Come on, Lucas. And we have another one. <sighs> oh, and there's a crow back there, watching me, keeping me company. Hey, buddy. You look a bit ominous today. Oh. They're watching the back door. Um, can I actually do anything other than just walk out here? The police. There must be some way to get around. Alright, so I think I need to go in there not looking. Yeah. And go. Ooh, okay, okay. Up the drain pipe. You know, what if I fall off here? No, no, I'm not going to do it. It would take me too long to get back up here. If you fell from this side, you would actually probably hurt yourself pretty badly. Uh, w why am I on a timer? Am I just going to, like, fall over <laughs> if I don't do this fast enough? That's, why is there a completely arbitrary timer? Get ready for what? Okay. What did I just avoid by doing that? I was going to fall over? Why? Do the QT or you'll fall over because the wind. Oh, here it is again. Okay. I really want to know what happens if I fail. Do I just like jump off 
and commit suicide? I don't know, I really do want to see a bunch of the fail states for this game, but I don't know if I have the patience to do it. It would take so long because of the save system. You know what's really sad? The music in this game is really good. But it's so extremely compressed that it sounds like shit. Like, it sounds like a 48 kilobyte per second MP3 or something. I mean, it's really badly compressed. It's so sad that they, you know, they paid a composer so much money to make such great music. And then after all of that, they just compress it down and make it sound like shit. So depressing. Alright, is there something back here? <laughs> nope. Can I jump up there? I mean, I could... I think I could reach it. Oh, i probably just go over here, right? Yep. Okay, that's our window, I think. I say that because it seems to be the only window around here that has an inside. Wonderful camera angles here. Apparently I'm going to pick up a brick. Oh wow, I'm, I'm literally going to just smash open her window, aren't I? I said I was going to break into her place, but I didn't know I literally break into her place by breaking the window. <laughs> that window leads to Tiffany's apartment. If only I could find a way to open it. Well... Hold on, hold on, I'm going to put this down. There's gotta be another way, right? I think it budged a little. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, Lucas. It's open a few inches. Keep going, keep going. You can do this. You can do this. Okay. Ugh. I almost had it. Okay, I'm gonna break out my two hands. Two hands to do this. Much faster. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, I guess if you're really lazy or you suck at doing that little mini game, they give you the option to use the brick to just break it open. <laughs> uh. Oh, look, the inside of her apartment is apparently a 2D image because it hasn't, uh, can't render it yet. I wasn't too proud about breaking into Tiffany's apartment like a common criminal, but I had no choice. I hadn't eaten in almost a day. I was starting to feel weak and tired. And look, now the outside is nothing but a 2D image. God, this game really does look hor just horrible. It came out on such limited platforms that it, they just had to squeeze so much into such a tiny footprint of, a uh, tiny bit of memory. And so that's why they have to bend over backwards to make, like, the level outside just a 2D image, because they can't even, they can't even fit it in memory, probably. Or maybe it was just a performance thing, they couldn't even, maybe it was just too much to handle. I don't know, it's usually a memory problem, though. Oh! They're gonna come over to check. Tyler's gonna come over to check, at least, and he's going to check the bed. Okay, so if I need to hide, I need to hide somewhere else. Good to know. Hmm, probably the closet. Looks like the only other place in here right now. Ooh, what was that? <laughs> Can I just go to sleep in her bed? That makes him feel better. Okay, that's kind of creepy. Breaking in to your ex-girlfriend's apartment and laying in her bed. Yeah, Lucas. I don't think she's going to take you back anytime soon. Oh, 
Looks like she's painting the place. That's a pretty nice color. Kinda. I don't know, it's, it's kind of kind of weird. Eh, whatever. It's not my house. I think, I think I'd probably paint everything white. If I had the choice of what to paint something, it'd be white. Maybe gray, but probably white. <laughs> now I can just sit on her couch. Why not? Hmm, comfortable. Alright, so he needs to eat. Let's... Ooh, there's some... Who... Who the hell has just prepared sandwiches just sitting on a plate in the fridge? That's weird. Usually you only make a sandwich when you're going to eat it. <laughs> He's looking around like a, a scared animal. That's somewhere where it shouldn't be. And of course, he's a total dick and doesn't use a cup and puts it right back in the fridge. Lucas, you want to know why this stuff is happening to you? It's because you don't put your drinks in a glass. Hmm, Natola. The what? The paste is making a crunching noise like he's eating chips. Um... N no, and he just ate it. He just—he just got it on his finger, on his on his gloves. He's wearing gloves. He just covered his gloves in Natola. Okay. Ooh, nothing to eat here. For an expert point of view on the subject, uh, we have with us today one of the most renowned specialists on Mayan civilization, Professor Dmitry Kuryakin of the Mesoamerican University here in New York. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Professor. You've written a fascinating book on Mayan rituals. And uh, I wanted to ask you if... A specialist in Mayan civilization? He'd known what Kekniklan means. Gotta meet this Professor Kuryakin. Good idea. Oh, hi, Tiffany. I just broke into your apartment. I hope you don't mind. Hey, what's up? What's new with you? scared me. What are you doing here? The police are looking for me. I needed a place to hide for a few hours. Lucas, what happened to you? The papers are saying that you killed several people. Is it true? The whole thing is very complicated. All I can tell you is that I am not a murderer. I love you, Lucas. I don't want to lose you. That would be Tyler. Lucas, it's the police. What are we gonna do? Look, I'm sure they just want to ask you a few questions. Just stay calm, Tiffany, and answer their questions. I'll I'll hide in the apartment. Everything will be fine. You'll see. Okay, let's go Ms. hide Harper? back in that closet. Miss Harper, are you home? Yes. Just a second. I'm coming. Alright, he's gonna check in the bed, but he, it didn't look like he checked here. Uh, stay. Lucas, I can't keep them waiting anymore. I've got to open the door. Okay, hold on. Like... Is Lucas and Tiffany... Are they back together or something? She said, I love you and I don't want to lose you. Didn't... Hasn't she already lost me? Didn't we break up? 
The last time I saw her, she was taking her stuff out of Lucas's apartment because they had broken up and she was moving out. Did something happen in between? Or does she mean like a non-romantic love? I don't know. It's, it sounded like she was acting as if they were like boyfriend and girlfriend again or something. I don't know. It was very weird. It Honestly, it, it could be taken as just her... You know, not wanting to lose a friend or whatever. She still has feelings for Lucas. Which I'm sure she does, just based on, you know, how she behaved last time Lucas saw her. She obviously still cares about him. It's not like she hates him, or he hates her. But still, it actually wouldn't surprise me if they had intended there to be some sort of, you know, like more scenes in between to flesh the story out. And the reason I say that is because towards the end of the game, not only does the quality of the writing just go down, but it also becomes fractured. Like, stuff will just happen that makes no sense, and you feel like you missed a scene. Like It's almost like they rushed to make the end, like they couldn't fit in all the stuff they wanted to do. Like they ran out of time. And it wouldn't surprise me if that actually happened. Maybe they actually did run out of time, and there actually were supposed to be a bunch of scenes that just never showed up. So it really wouldn't surprise me if that's true. Miss Harper? Yes? I'm Detective Todd of Miles, NYPD. I'm working on the Lucas Kane case. I think that you two were romantically involved, isn't that right? We're involved, yes. But we separated. We broke up about a month ago. Have you heard from Mr. Kane recently? Has he tried to contact you? I went by his apartment day before yesterday to pick up the last of my things. We hardly spoke. I haven't heard from him since. Do you mind if I look around your apartment? Well, it's just that... Hey, I'll only be a minute. Go ahead. Oh, get ready. <laughs> what happens if I fail this one? Do I, like, suddenly scream inside of the closet and thrash about? <laughs> like, what am I even doing here? Doing a little redecorating? Yes, the apartment wasn't in very good shape, so I've been painting it. It's taking a long time with my job. I don't have much time to... And what do you do? I'm a nurse. I work at St. John's Hospital. I think I'm controlling my breathing by doing this. I guess I'll gasp for air if I mess up or something? I don't know. It's really dumb. Does he find it a bit strange that that window's open, even though it's freezing cold outside? In fact, why didn't I shut that window? <laughs> Do I even need to complete this successfully? I mean, he's not even in the same room as me. Thank you for your cooperation, miss. If Kane does try to recontact you, please call me right away. Here's my card. Be careful, miss. Kane's a very dangerous man. Oh, no. It's... Uh, I... I think I... Wait, actually, I can actually skip past that. It's it's going back to a scene that I've already completed, this whole asylum thing. It's because of the weird chapter system in this game. The save system is just completely messed up. So... Let me stop and go back to the main menu. And wait a minute, do I have... Uh, wait, what? Oh my fucking god. Alright, um, I'll be right back. This, Yeah, this is totally broken. I'll be right back. Alright, welcome back. This is what I'm wrestling with. Aside from the game having lost my progress to begin with, this is what happens when you go to load a previous chapter. In this case, this is the GOG Unlock with Everything Unlocked edition, uh, version of the save game. So when I'm going back to load a previous chapter, which will be the next one that I'm supposed to play in the game, here's what I'm presented with. Continue chapter without saving. Can you chat with a new login? And with my current login, my current save game will be lost. This is what I just did. My current save game will be lost. 
I assume that means it wipes all of my future progress, but starts me back at this chapter. Continuing on from this point. That's what I assumed. But as you saw, that's not what happened. I finished the chapter, and then when I went to start the next one, I had no save game, and the only chapter I could start was the beginning of the game. I just tried with a new login. However, when I did that, it said the save game was corrupted. Which is bullshit. So I guess I'm gonna have to play chapter by chapter without saving. Whatever, let's go. Stupid save game system, Jesus Christ. Horrible this man I barely seen on TV was my last hope. I didn't know what connection there could be between the Mayans and what had happened to me, but at that point, I was ready to accept any explanation that could make sense out of the nightmare that my life had become. Hello, uh, I'm a journalist, and I have an appointment with Professor Kiryakin. The professor's waiting for you. Okay. Yeah, just the save game system in this game is just horrible. Absolutely dreadful. Hmm, some interesting art here. Whoa. A lot of lights in this place. And apparently a lot of dust, or fog or something, to be able to see the light beams so much. Circular altar that was probably used in sacrifices. Early, post-classical period. Hmm, I didn't know Lucas knew so much about history. Solid gold chalices and plates. Probably used during sacrifice ceremonies from Compeche. Hmm, can I go up here? No. Feminine figurine found on the Pacific coast of Guatemala. And there's a card, of course. Which doesn't even matter because I have everything unlocked because of the save game, but oh well. <laughs> Mm. I'm sorry to say, but I really don't feel like examining everything. Not with how annoyed I am after the whole save game fiasco. Let's just talk to the professor. Professor Kiryakin? Yes? My name's John Cunningham. We spoke on the phone. I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. Ah, yes, I've been waiting for you, young man. What, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? Uh, New York Times. I write for the New York Times. The New York Times is interested in my work. Oh, oh and that makes some of my esteemed colleagues green with envy. Okay, well, he's egotistical. It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Have we met somewhere before? Uh, let's joke about it. Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, I guess I must have one of those boring faces everybody sees everywhere. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. You see before you the ancient Mayan god Kweknitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, the second in the other world. By opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. What about the other world? Could you explain this other world? Or the world beyond our own, the kingdom of the gods and the dead. The Mayans believed that human sacrifices allowed them to hear the voices of the deceased and see into the future. Hold on, I just realized something. I'm supposed to be a reporter with the New York Times, right? Writing an article. If you were writing an article and interviewing someone about the subject, wouldn't you be either audio recording it 
you know, recording it in some way, either writing notes or making an audio recording of it or something. Doesn't he find that a bit strange? Why, why would you get information from someone about an article you're writing and not actually record the information? Is, is he going to just, like, drive to the office or something and try to get it down as fast as possible before he forgets it? I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to work as a journalist. Um, sacrifices. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. What the hell kind of a walk is that? His hands were clipping through his body. That was weird. This painting, dating from the first century BC, shows a sacrificial ceremony. The victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. The priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. Right, so this has connections to what's happening, obviously. How did the ritual sacrifice work? Oh, the Oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. That is why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the executor. The Oracle takes complete control of the executor, manipulating him from a distance. Tell me about the executor. What happened to the executor after the sacrifice? He went mad and committed suicide after accomplishing his part of the ritual. A Mayan sacrifice. That's what it was. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who are you? Uh, what the hell? I should tell him the truth. What, what could happen? My name is Lucas Kane. The police are looking for me about a murder that I did not commit, but I was the executor. You're a murderer? I'm innocent. I stabbed someone I'd never seen before three times, cutting his arteries, just like you described. Do you mean to say that there is a Mayan Oracle still living today? But, but that's completely impossible. Show him the forearms. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Oh, it's the symbol of Quetnitlan. The executors cut this into their own forearms before accomplishing the sacrifice. So, it is true. My god, the Codex was right. The Codex? What are you talking about, Professor? You can't stay here. Your picture is in the paper that the security guard is reading. He's sure to recognize you. Come, let's leave here, and I'll tell you all about it. Well, apparently within like five minutes, the Professor can easily be convinced to believe that uh, a Mayan Oracle is still alive today, and that I'm a murderer, but I'm innocent. And now he's going to, what? Do aiding and abetting a criminal, or whatever it's called? Putting himself in... Uh, at risk of being arrested himself? Little bit hard to believe, but okay. <laughs> whatever. Well, this black screen is fascinating. Hello, black screen. You're very black. As much as I like you, black screen, I would like to see the game. Could, could the game maybe show up? That'd be kind of cool. Hello? Hello. There we go. This time the game didn't crash. I'm not sure how that edit's going to look to you. It might be seamless, but as soon as I went outside of the door, the game crashed, and I had to replay the entire scene again because, again, the save system is terrible. Oh my god, I'm having so many technical issues with this game. It's driving me crazy. Let's continue. Another stupid action scene incoming. Professor. I'm a good... Is this gonna... Is this gonna get all Matrixy? I can't remember. It probably is. Any slow-mo jumps? Uh. Holy shit! No. Okay, so there's no one actually driving these cars, right? They're just, like, being... 
moved around by mind power, I guess. Yep, of course, it's getting matrixy. And the car just explodes, because you know when cars crash into things, they just explode, right? have to leap when he's jumping. What's the point of that? Professor! Ellie Codex speaks of the coming of a child. A prophet. The answer to all of life's questions. The oracle kills to find the child. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, what? The professor died because I pushed him out of the way? I mean, I get that he hit his head on the concrete from being pushed down, which, you know, could hurt quite a bit, might put a good gash in your head, maybe even... I don't know. It could hurt you quite a bit, but I don't think it'd freaking kill you. I don't know, maybe he just passed out. forward to meeting you. Few men are capable of resisting an oracle. What is there so different about you? The chroma. You have the chroma. So that explains it. How did you ever acquire such a power? No matter. What matters is, the time has come for you to die. The Chroma? What does that mean? The force that created the universe. The origin of everything. It gives extraordinary powers to those who possess it. This is some kind of dream, isn't it? You're not really there in front of me, are you? <laughs> Reality is a notion that doesn't have any meaning where I come from. We are not really here. And yet, you will die here. Believe me, this world is just as real as your own. Enough talk. Other matters await my attention. We will see each other again. In the other world. Gibin Dinna Quendaune. Oh, that sucks. I guess I better run. More QTEs! Green, blue, yellow, yellow. I should probably clarify when I say... When I say, ugh, more QTEs, I don't mean that I hate QTEs on them, uh, just by themselves. But what I mean is more terrible Simon Says QTEs. These QTEs are just horrible. If they were better, I might not have a problem with it, but as it is, they are terrible. And every single time they show up on screen, I feel like a part of my insides die. It's like I'm, I'm losing an hour off of my life every single time a QTE happens in this game. Agatha, but how... 
Listen closely, Lucas. Those who employ the Oracle are searching for a little girl. A perfectly pure soul that's never been incarnated. Her coming was foretold by the most ancient prophecy in human history. She's the one you see in your dreams. You must find her before the Oracle does and put her someplace safe. Hurry, there isn't much time and they are already back on your trail. I must inform you that we are unhappy. Very unhappy. He has escaped you again. First in the museum lot. A big mistake, the museum lot. And then in the wave. What's worse, you showed yourself openly to him. And all for nothing. It's just... I was unaware of certain factors, my lords. Which factors? He possesses the Chroma. That's impossible. Idiocy! How could he possess the Chroma? I know not. But it is a certainty that he does. This is how he resisted my psychic attacks and successfully evaded the police. This could force us to change our plans. This is serious. Very serious. That is not all. Someone has intervened. What do you mean? While you were with him in the wave? Yes, my lord. Someone brushed aside all of my attacks on Cain and protected him. It was not one of ours. Certainly not. No. I think it was something else. Its chroma was... different. Another clan? That's impossible. Only we are left. We have a rival. Who searches for the Indigo child as we do. They must not find the child. That would be a catastrophe. A disaster. Cain is on their side. Unless they are just using him. He is the key. He sees through our eyes. He must not find the child. You must deal with this problem. Definitively. I have already taken measures. He will be definitively dealt with. And soon. Do not disappoint us. You may leave us. Sleazy Hotel. The Oracle is in Marcus's church. There's not a moment to lose. I've got to warn him or he's dead. We should wait, Carla. Backup will be here any minute now. No way. This time I'm gonna get him. The desk guy swore to us that he was in his room and he's not gonna get away. I hope that guy didn't screw up when he said he recognized Kane's photo from the papers. He looked so blind he wouldn't recognize his own mother in a phone booth. We'll find the answer in room 369. Okay, better warn him really quickly. Got a call, where's the phone? This phone has no cord. This phone has no cord. Up, Marcus, pick up. The phone has no cord. I'd just like to point that out. Hello, my son. Uh, telephone. I'll be with you in just a minute. I just need to answer the telephone. Okay. Wow, I'm I'm controlling so many characters, and it just keeps switching. God, the controls are so awkward in this game. It just constantly changes up the rules. The hell's the phone? There it is. St. Paul's Cathedral. Marcus, he's in the church. Don't let him get anywhere near you. Lucas? Is that you, Lucas? What's going on? Uh, no time to explain. I don't have time to explain, Marcus. Run, right now. Shut the doors and lock them tight. I'm begging you, just, just do what I say. Oh, come now, Lucas. Just do it, now! Okay, let's go do it. Really quickly. Uh, excuse me. There we go. Whew. Okay, okay. We're good, we're good. Alright, I'm locked in. Now, can you explain what's going on? Call the police, and don't come out until they get there. 
Lucas? 369. Here it is. Yeah, you, you just get thrown around at this point in the game between a bunch of different characters. It's... This... I mentioned that the game constantly goes downhill in terms of its quality of writing, and this is kind of the general area in the game where it just goes absolutely batshit insane. They just throw everything into the mix. It's just like a hodgepodge of hokey B-movie nonsense. Just Mayan oracles and death rituals and a child prophecy and superpowers and... An old woman with special powers, and just, oh my god. And by the way, you might think like it can't possibly get any stupider than this and crazy and nonsensical. It does. It actually gets crazier than this. There's more. None of these camera angles are good. Is this even the right door? I... Screw it, I'm going to all the other doors. It's the wrong room number. Damn. It's the wrong room number. Damn. It's the wrong room number. Damn. Hey, Carla, what are you doing, girl? Get a move on. Shut up. Hold on. I don't trust your intuitions. I gotta check all the other ones. It's the wrong room number. Damn. It's the wrong room number. Damn. It's the wrong room number. Damn. It's the wrong room number. Damn it. It's the wrong room number. Ah, I thought I had it this time. It's the wrong room number. Damn it. It's the wrong room number. Damn. It's the wrong room number. Okay, remind me never to doubt you again, Tyler. I'm sorry. You were right. Either he's gone through some changes since the photo, or this is not him. <laughs> Shit! What the hell happened? Calm down, girl. I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. Tyler, it was the wrong room! Huh? There must be another room 369 down the hall somewhere. See, I knew it! I should have never trusted you, Tyler, you piece of shit. 368... 369! Hold on, let me check the others first. It's the wrong room number. Damn! It's the wrong room number. Damn! Okay, here we go. I think the bird has flown the coop. I'm gonna find him, Tyler. I promise you. Come on, let's go. Now he's fucking Spider-Man, just like glued to the wall or something. Now they have Tiffany. It's a fun fair. It's not fun anymore. Minus, minus 26 degrees centigrade, dear God. I'm moving towards my death. Everything that I've been through since the second I entered that diner, all of it was leading me to this moment. I was tired of fighting, running and hiding all the time. I was losing anyway. There was only one thing left to do. Try to save Tiffany's life. And after that, I decided not to fight my destiny anymore. Lucas! Lucas, help me! Tiffany, huh? she's at the top of the roller coaster. I have to find a way up there. Okay, and there's a... Wait, is that the same one from the beginning? That's weird. I get the feeling I've seen that guy somewhere before. Tons of guy outside of the diner at the very beginning of the game. Okay, let's go save Tiffany. Lucas! Lucas, help me! 
I think I'm going the wrong way. I apparently just picked up an additional life. Okay. Cool. I guess. <laughs> Where do I go? Inside of here? No. Uh, here. Lucas! Oh god, that's gonna get Lucas, annoying. Help me! It is really gonna get annoying. I need to save her right now before I lose my sanity. Hey, Crow, I think the crow's actually telling me where to go. Is it? They're actually helping me. That's weird. Uh, hmm. Oh, here we go. Lucas! Oh, God. Lucas, help me! Tiffany, I can't... I... Look, I, I love you, Tiffany, but please die so you stop screaming. Or you can stay alive and just stop screaming. That's fine, too. How does this place even have power? That doesn't make any sense. Safety first. It's not like I have superpowers or anything. <laughs> I'm pretty sure roller coasters don't work that way, but okay. Go away, Lucas! It's a trap! They're gonna kill you! Yeah, well, I have superpowers and you don't, so um, don't worry about it. Also, what do you bet I'm gonna have to do a balancing act here? Oh, surprise! Of course. Keep the marker in the center, mm hmm So it's the breathing thing, okay. Yeah, it's basically the same as the breathing thing. Okay, someone please tell me. While I'm doing this, let's see if I can- Oh god, let's see if I can avoid dying while I'm talking. Lucas can, like, dodge cars, dodge bullets in slow motion, do backflips off the walls and stuff. Why doesn't he just make a super jump across this entire gap? Oh, uh, uh, uh. This makes no sense. He has superpowers. He could just jump across it. He jumped on top of a train, like 50 feet into the air. Okay, maybe more like 25 feet. I'm pretty sure he could jump a 10-foot gap. All right, so when is the trap going to show itself? Enjoy your ride to the other world. No way, this was a trap? <gasps> Wait, I get to play as the Oracle? The Oracle or Lucas Kane in both in the unknown place. Let's go with Kane. That's it. It's over. Now there's nothing to do but wait, though it shouldn't be long. Perfect. All has gone according to plan. I sense another signal. Cerebral spinal activity. I think he's dreaming. Oh god, we're back to the kid. Okay, remember what I said about this game getting even more ridiculous? Well, that's exactly what it's doing, and it's going to continue to get even more ridiculous. It's really fascinating to watch this game and just imagine... It's it's amazing that this game even exists. Like, how do you even make something like this? It's so bizarre. It really is amazing. It's fascinating to watch, just to see what crazy stuff is going to happen next. Alright, well, before I go completely insane... All the technical issues have kind of put me in a bad mood, so I'm going to end this episode here. And when I come back, I'll probably be in a better mood. Did I say mood? I think I just said mood. A better mood. M-O-O-D. And hopefully the game's save system will not completely screw me over again. Ah. <sighs>
I'm young Lucas Kane. They didn't even hire a new actor to voice me to save money. Okay, everyone. Well, I hope everyone has enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.